Ya. God is immortal. God is God is blissful. God is eternal. So people try to reach him. By trying to reach him you have denied his presence everywhere so when you try to reach him so the journey is in time and space so you are going from a place where he is not to a place where he is then he cannot be god because god has to be at all times at all places if the god is there at all times at all places you cannot also be different from him if you are not different from god who is eternal who is blissful who is omniscient your experience is different you are miserable you are finite you experience sorrow and death this bridge has to be built this gap of understanding has to be clear this is where the shastras say the whole problem is in ever misplaced confused identity about you what you call yourself you is a name and a form which is present in god all the time like the name and form wave and bubble are present in the ocean all the time when the wave and bubble rise from the ocean they see other waves and bubbles they are enamored by those appearances forget that they are nothing but the eternal water and experience birth and death what has to be done is not any action is to see yourself inside means turn your attention from the form to the one who supports the form to the one who illumines the form if you turn your attention to that you will understand you are that eternal blissful conscious existence so it is all that the all that is needed is knowledge not action yet we have covered this real being of, of ourselves with lots of confusions lots of thoughts born out of ignorance that i am this being i am full and complete and they, then you identify with the name and the form that being finite wants to make it complete through desires and acquisitions these desires and acquisitions become a thick layer of covering on you the real being so what has to be done is to first thin down this layer then turn your attention to that which is the real being and own that to be yourself two types of problems happen when we talk like this 
One, a lot of people think it's very difficult. By their very thought it is difficult, they make it difficult. They do not try to follow the pointers. They believe that you have to do several things. After several lives, you will get something called moksha. So people are not willing to follow your guiding. That is one problem. Second problem is people who think that theoretical knowledge is the ultimate. They got it and they do not try to put forth the effort to thin down this layer of confusions. Most of you who had been coming to these sessions have gone beyond this stage of total identification with the body, mind, intellect, with the external world. You have reasonably made your mind intellect subtle enough to enquire and to meditate. But here, a little extra effort will make it simple and beautiful. First, let us understand how these layers are formed. These layers are formed by agitations, by thoughts, by agitations, by thoughts. When you think you are incomplete because you feel you are the body, therefore you have desires and therefore actions. So what? You feel you need something. So you depend on results. Then the next agitations are formed by your think, doing things right, doing things wrong. And feeling you are responsible for several things that are happening in your life. So this sense of doership and feeling that I am suffering, I am enjoying, Doership, enjoyership, and depending on the results, alienate you from the real being that you are, reinforce your identity with the form, brings out thick layers of coverings. So all that has to be now done is thin down these layers. How? The problem was depending on the results. The problem was the sense of doership and enjoyership, the individuality, the ego. To undo this, you have to take up actions, not for the fulfillment through the body, mind, intellect, for reducing your vasanas, in a dedicated activity and through dedicated activity reduce the vasanas. So therefore, this type of action is called offering to God, offering our actions to God. Also it means you are doing all actions to know him, to know him. Second, not to have the sense of agency and doership, you have to withdraw from the identification that you are this body. So the first detaching from the results is called Tyaga. Detaching from the sense of doership and enjoyership 
is called sannyasa. So this through this tyaga and sannyasa, while going through your life, while passing through your life, you thin down the layers of confusions called also vasanas. And in that purified mind and intellect, you can feel the presence of this consciousness clearly. Right? So therefore, though the ultimate is through knowledge, the process involves cleaning the personality through karma yoga and bhakti yoga. There are three main ways, there are several ways, three main ways. In action, try to know him, try to unite with him. Trying to unite with him is called yoga and through action is called karma, action, through that, uniting with him, your karma yoga. Unite with him through love, through devotion, that's called bhakti yoga. Unite with him through knowledge, meditation, that's called jnana yoga. All the three roads take you to a point where from its common pursuit of trying to meditate and know him. So this karma yoga, where you have to renounce the fruits of dependence on the fruits of action and detach from the sense of agency, I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, is the subject matter of chapter 3, 4 and 5. In chapter 3, the emphasis was that though renunciation is the last step, knowledge is the main aspect of discovering your identity with God. You cannot skip the process of purifying the mind intellect through karma yoga. So through dynamic action. So third chapter, the importance of dynamic action. Dynamic action, even if then if it is egoistic, it will produce again agitations. So work for the welfare of others, knowing that the same God who is the essence in you, is the essence in all. In other words, you alone live in all forms. So therefore, you try to dedicate all your actions for the good of the totality. That's called Yajna Bhava. Third chapter, dynamic activity. Fourth chapter, Yajna Bhava. And the fifth chapter, how to detach from the sense of doership and enjoyership. When you have done that, you, come, you become fit for meditation. So, fifth chapter, he having told us how to detach from this doership and enjoyership, he is now slowly taking us to introduce the basic principles of meditation, of renunciation, through the next eight or nine slokas. Let us see. We have done up to 20. Nineteen says, Ihaiva Taijita Sargaha, Yesham Samye Stitam Manaha, Nirdosham Samum Brahma, Tasmad Brahmani Te Stitaha. It says, One who is equanimous means his mind rests in the quiet being, the consciousness, like in sleep, 
like in sleep, such a person is freed from the ego and no vasanas. He sees the same Brahman everywhere. He gets established in that. And therefore, he is not again born as a miserable martyr because the cause for being born again and again as a miserable martyr is the ego. That is not there when you have found equanimity in and through your living. How do you find that equanimity? When he gets something pleasant, he is not excited. Nacha udvijet aprapyacha apriyam. Na udvijet prapyacha apriyam. Nor gets depressed when he gets something unpleasant. Sira buddhihi with a steady mind. Asam mudaha. Not deluded. Brahmavid, the knower of Brahman. Brahmani stitaha is established in that Brahman. Asam mudaha. No more delusion that is the body, mind, intellect. Therefore, pleasant and unpleasant things cannot disturb him. The pleasant and unpleasant things happen only in duality, which is the mischief of the mind, which makes you believe you are the body, mind, intellect. And when you know that all these results are still finite, they are catering only to the body, mind, intellect, and with repercussions. You have no more interest in them. You have found a better source of security and happiness in the self. And therefore, you get established in that self. Brahma with Brahman is the Tadi. No one who has known Brahman gets established in Brahma. And now, what is the problem? Depending on external experiences for your security and happiness. And turning your attention to the forms. So, if you have to experience the quiet mind, that you have to experience that consciousness, you have to turn the attention of your mind of, from the external forms, external world to the subject, the internal consciousness. That is meditation. So that is the sixth chapter. Here are some pointers which help us in that. Bhakya sparsheshu asaktatma vindati atmane yat sukham sa brahma yoga yuktatma sukhamachaya masnuti. All of us are resisting even after knowledge. A plunge into the spiritual path because we are carried away by the little joys of the world. Please listen very carefully. Please listen very carefully. The world of objects has joys. When you are disturbed, you take a cup of coffee. You feel you are relaxed. Sugar stays sweet. Salt is saltish for anybody. When you are hungry, you take food. And taking food, you become peaceful. So, 
don't brush aside that objects don't have joy but they are finite they are finite to use them is wisdom to depend on them is suicidal use the world that much necessary for you to carry on this journey of spirituality use them to that extent but to depend on them for your security and happiness is to get into this total messing of your own life so world has a little limited finite joys and sorrows also these very joys lead you to sorrow that will come in the next uh, one or two verses use them as much necessary without eating food you cannot meditate but don't depend on that don't be lost in don't become a foodie don't be lost in running after tasty food after unintelligently eating all sorts of food do not do that do those actions feed yourself with those impulses that are needed for you to sustain and survive to follow the path of spirituality right so people think leaving the external world they lose all these joys but when they lose these finite joys it's not a joy it's not a joy it's a total fulfillment and unconditional infinite bliss you experience in your sleep the joys and sorrows normally are got by your mind and when you get a joy again agitation is formed you want to repeat it you don't want it to end before you got it agitated when you got it agitated after it ends agitated that's all the mischief of the mind in sleep this mind is absent it was not a vacuum it is not a vacuum it is at that time you experience the infinite bliss right so one has to become less dependent on sources of external joys and sorrows that is called detachment bakya sparsheshu contacts of the external world asaktatma one who is detached one who is detached from the vindati atmani yat sukham whatever happiness he gets through that the same that's only one part getting detached but the conserved energy should be used in getting hooked to meditation so that one who having with the run from the external contacts turns its attention to meditation on brahman he attains infinite endless unqualified happiness what is wrong with the external world next shloka ye hi samsparsha ja bhoga dukkha yo na evate 
ಆದ್ಯಂತವಂತ ಕೌಂತೇಯ ನತೇಶು ರಮತೆ ಬುಧ ಏಹಿ ಸಂಸ್ಪರ್ಶಜ ಭೂಗಾಹ ದೀಸ್ ಜಾಯ್ಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನ್ ಎನ್ ಆದಿ ಆದಿ ಅಂತ ಅಂತವತ್ ಅಂತವಂತಹ ಆದಿ ಅಂತವಂತಹ ದೀಸ್ ಜಾಯ್ಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ naturally because they are finite because they are conditioned when they end they produce sorrow or even if they don't end an unintelligent indulgence brings you disease etc make you dependent and therefore these joys born out of contact with sense objects becomes the womb of sorrows all your sorrows today or because of your attachment to those joys you don't experience sorrow for which you have no value at all what you have a value what you have a value that alone gives you sorrow why you become dependent on that you become dependent on that therefore these joys born out of contact with sense objects becomes the very womb of sorrow they have a beginning and an end and budaha the wise people therefore nateshu ramate they do not revel in them they do not revel in them these bring sorrow means agitations ripples waves in you you have to eliminate these ripples you have to eliminate these agitations you have to eliminate these waves if you can do that you will experience that joy in this very life people talking about moksha a post mortem state is a speculation because you have not known it or the people who have gone there can show it to you you do not know others can dem- cannot demonstrate it to you it's a speculation but if you can eliminate these agitations these waves these ripples born out of sense enjoyments then you are resting in that blissful consciousness so he says shiknoti iha eva sodhum sodhum to endure shiknoti enable iha in this life itself yaha whoever he may be prak sharira vimokshanat before he casts off this body what are these waves kama krodha udbhavam born of desire anger these waves are born of desire anger when you have desire kama you become attached raga and when there is an obstacle you become angry krodha kama raga krodha fear of losing it bhaya these are the waves kama wave krodha wave raga wave bhaya wave these are the waves that conceal the beautiful self so in this very life you must be able to control these waves though not totally 
Vegam, Kama, Krodo, Dham, Vegam. Their are onslaughts. Their are onslaughts should be reduced. They should be thinned down. If you can do that in this very life, through detaching from the senses, attaching to the self, this is meditation. Detaching from the senses and experiences, attaching to the self. If you can reduce the onslaughts of this karma and krodha, you will experience that happiness which is promised in the scriptures here itself. You don't have to wait to die. So make a conscious effort to reduce the onslaughts of these karma and krodha. How do you do it? by detaching. How can you detach? By focusing your attention to the self. This detachment vairagya, focusing to the self, abhyasa, together is called meditation. Detachment, attachment. Detachment from the false, attaching to the real. So you cannot detach without attaching to the self. Unless you have something greater promise, you cannot detach from your lower pursuits. So turn your attention to this self, God, and that's slowly withdraw from the external experiences, reduce the veracity and velocity of these agitations, then you will experience that bliss in this very life itself. What is that state of happiness you get when you have withdrawn from the external involvement with the world of objects for your joys and sorrows? What is that joy? What you experience inside? Yo antaha sukaha antaha aramaha tatha anta jyotihi evayaha sayogi brahma nirvanam brahma bhuto digachati. One who is happy not through the outside world, is happy being with the self. Like in sleep, by like in sleep, one who doesn't revel in the external world revels in his own self. One who doesn't go after useless knowledges, one who gains all his knowledge from that very self. As the self, one who is illumined within, one who is experiencing that blissful self as himself, which is of nature of knowledge. Such a person completely withdraws from his mind. This withdrawal from the mind is called moksha. And such a person, having withdrawn from this mind, is Brahman, like in sleep. Sleep is not an activity. Sleep is to withdraw from all activities. You have first withdrawn from physical activity, then mental and intellectual activities, then naturally you sleep. Similarly, when you have withdrawn from the external activities of the body, mind, intellect, you become that Brahman. In other words, bringing the condition of sleep into waking, withdrawal of the body, mind, intellect, and thus discovering you to be the Brahman is called meditation or spiritual Perfection.
लभन्ते ब्रह्म निर्वाणम ऋषय क्षीन कलमशा you gain that state of bliss be at it you the eternal omniscient existence consciousness bliss you gain that who rishayaha who has controlled the senses and therefore china kalmashaha who have been freed from vasanas kalmasha vasanas dirt obstructions one who has been freed from them how chinna dvaida this is the most important clue you have to meditate on this what causes these agitations kalmashaha what causes these sorrows duality where there is no duality a concept of good and bad concept of pain and comfort concept of life and death concept of honor and dishonor there is no sorrow in sleep in sleep you do not have all these concepts they all belong to the mind mind itself is a pseudo entity mind itself is a pseudo entity they belong to them when you detach from them in sleep there is no duality in sleep the sleep of a learned person the sleep of an ignorant person the sleep of a sinner the sleep of a saint it's all the same there what is there is unconditional unbroken eternal blissful self it's the same everywhere so this duality is caused by the mind which draw from the mind find the oneness in all once you find the oneness in all there is no insecurity where there is no insecurity there are no sorrows insecurity is the mother of all negative thoughts insecurity is born of false belief that you are the body mind and intellect insecurity is born out of the belief that you are the body mind and intellect insecurity is the mother of all negative qualities therefore understand you are not the body mind and intellect you are that self without which the body cannot function without which the mind cannot emote without which the intellect cannot think without you they cannot work but without them you can be there like in sleep without you they cannot work without them you can be there like in sleep so if you sit and see without which i cannot work without even the body mind what is there if you sit and see for yourself that is called meditation that is called meditation you have to sit and see and then you will see yourself to that non dual blissful self so duality is the cause of all sorrow which is made by the mind which itself is pseudo chinna dvaidaha chinna dvaidha yatatmanah striving to reach that sarva bhuta hit this is most important sarva bhuta hite rataha who is engaged all the time in the welfare of everybody in the seat of meditation you do for 20 minutes rest of the time you are interacting with the world if you are to live you have to act when you live in the world act as the ego 
for the fulfillment of the body mind intellect you are only acquiring breeding sorrows ego brings sorrow ego is the feeling that i'm the body mind intellect ego brings sorrow ego brings death ego brings bondage to get over this ego is to see the self in you as the self in all this self in you is the god that god is all that exists and therefore to get rid of this ego now try to expand your self from this body mind intellect see all and serve all this is the most important clue we do several things in spiritual thing listening contemplating meditating by hearting sanskrit it doesn't work till you do this see the one god only and serve all sarva bhuta hidirata therefore spirituality is not one who has no social connectivity he has to feel the god everywhere and so why you love god swami ji gives a beautiful example you can't say i love flowers and don't, don't water plants if you love flowers you will water the plants so if you love god at the same god in all you have to serve him in all forms and that is the only way you can stop seeing the differences seeing the differences is the cause of all your sorrow therefore the sarva bhuta hite rataha is most important kama krodha vyukta nam iti nam yata chetasam abhito brahma nirvanam vartate viditatmanam this bliss that you are seeking this immortality that you are seeking this knowledge that you are seeking is your real being you don't have to do anything you only have to remove the obstructions therefore he says kama krodha vyukta na one who is freed from the kama and krodha desire and anger yati na the the one who is striving yata chetasam one who has got their mind under their control self controlled ascetics they will find this brahma nirvana state is their real being that is there on all directions it has not to be gained that alone is there on all directions you are not able to experience because of these agitations of kama and krodha the moment you control those kama and krodha through a controlled mind intellect you will find that's your real being everywhere all pervading this is got through knowing this self viditatmanam and therefore you have to withdraw that is meditation so he is now telling parshan krutva bahi bahyan chuh chuh bahi bahyan chuh cha eva antare bruho prana apano समौ कृत्वाचारिणतीय मनोबुद्धि मुनि मुख्यपरायण विगत इच्छा भय क्रोध यदा मुक्त सह पश्यावा बहिर्बाह्या चुश्चेवांतरे भ्रुवो प्राणापान समौ कृत्वा नाभ्याचारिण इतेन्द्रिय मनोबुद्धि मुनिर्मोक्षपरायणा 
ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶ್ ದೆಮ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಶಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬಾಹ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಪರ್ಶಾನ್ ಬಹಿ ಕೃತ್ವ ಬಾಹ್ಯಾನ್ external sparshan contact bahikrutva expelling them expel them chachuschayvantaro bruvohu the space between the two eyebrows turn your attention as though you are turning your attention to the space between the two eyebrows prana apano samakrutva having regulated inhaling and exhaling nasa bhyantara charyano eta indriya mano buddhi one who has control the senses mind and intellect while keeping the ultimate goal parayana moksha liberation how vigata icha bhaya krodaha free from desire fear and anger he will find when he has followed these different steps he is ever free sada mukta eva saha what are the different steps first expel the external contacts or withdraw from all the external or shut yourself from the external contacts and then turn your attention as though to the two middle of the two eyebrows don't take it physically literally you will only get migraine the idea is you should focus in such a way as though when you are trying to look at that middle of the eyebrows how you completely focus that way you focus your attention on this cell or ishta devata and prana pano samkuta the inhaling and exhaling should be moderated should be harmonized how do you do that very simple people who know pranayama let them do you don't do anything you just watch the breathing it gets regularized just watch the breathing it gets regularized this is called prana vikshana prana vikshana prana pano samakrutva nasa bhyantara charinau yetendriya mano buddhihi at least in the seat of meditation control your senses control your mind control your intellect give an auto suggestion to your mind and intellect i will pick up all your pursuits after this 20 minutes 20 minutes you cooperate with me after that i will pick up all your fancies so that in the seat of meditation you withdraw from this pursuits of the sense of mind and intellect keeping your goal as freedom from this bondage main obstructions desire icha and consequent fear and anger when you have a desire you have fear you may not get it or lose it or uh, and then when there is an obstruction krodha they are not three different things ignorance i am the self make me desire for experiences ignorance at the spiritual level becomes desire at the intellectual level becomes agitation at the mental level and translates as action at the physical level so it's all one ignorance at different levels is attachment fear and anger 
So ignorance is the cause of our suffering. If this ignorance has to go, we control them from the effects. Attachment to external world, leave. And when you leave that, fear gets reduced. Krodha gets reduced. These agitations get reduced. And then you can meditate. And you will find you are already liberated. Because when these thought waves are not there, you experience that self. And to meditate on whom? How do you meditate on this self? Contemplate on this self. Bhuktaram yagnatapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram Sukhridam sarva bhutanam natva maam shanti bruchati. Bhuktaram yagnatapasam all the yagnas, dedicated activities, tapas, disciplines, austerities, are all supported by, felt by this consciousness. All your activities, dedicated activities, all your austerities are supported by, felt by this consciousness. That's a meditation by itself. How am I able to do the yajna? My hand moves, my eyes see, my ears hear. How? Because of that life force. So you feel that life force in you who makes you do the yajna, who makes you take up several restraints and where you feel the impact of these ignas and tapas, that is the life force, that is the self, that is the consciousness, without which no experience of yours is ever possible. Therefore, he is the Lord of all experiences. Loka means experience. Ishwara, the Lord. Sarva Loka, all experiences. Maheshwaraha, the Lord of all the experienced world of everybody, is this consciousness. Right? Sukhrudam, Sarva Bhut, he is the best friend of all beings. Well wisher of all beings. He is the friend, well wisher of all world beings. Natva, having understood. Shanti Vrichati, you can gain peace. And he said, Mom, when you listen to these first statements, it looks as though it is talked about the impersonal God. True. But impersonal God, you can't concentrate because you need love. So Krishna says, Mom, meditate. This impersonal God, the consciousness itself as me. So, Om Tassatiti, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Su, Upanishad Su. Brahma Vidyayam, Yoga Shastra, Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvati, Karma Sanyasa Yogo Nama, Panchamodhyaya, fifth chapter is ended. Now, the whole purpose is to withdraw from the external world, turn our attention to the self. This is meditation. So, the technique of meditation. How to do that is the sixth chapter, Dhyana Yoga or Atma Samyama Yoga. In the sixth chapter, mainly the technique is given, but details of on what to meditate, 
how to meditate are given after the 7th to 15th. Sixth chapter broad outlines, adjustments, attitude, all of them are given. Broad principles are given, but more practical details are there from 7th to 15th. Therefore, here, the doing part of meditation being important, the first six chapters come under karma. Also, that's the individual. Twam. The next six chapters, tat, that God, and devotion, bhakti. The last six chapters is asi, the oneness and jnana. So first six chapters karma yoga. So meditation also comes on karma yoga because here the doing meditation is highlighted. So we'll now go to the sixth chapter. To a few of our friends here in this forum, I have lived 83 years. 83 years of full dynamic activity, both spiritual and material. I have had exposure to the external world of glamour, power, luxuries, all I have been exposed. I can tell you, if you do not wake up to their miserable results, if you do not prepare yourself before it is too late, your old age and death will harass you and you will not be able to find any peace. So please, listening is only one part, Shravana. You have to regularly do reflection, manana, and practice meditation, nididhyasana. It's your life. You think it's okay, I will do later. You will not be able to do. Suddenly old age comes, you are in hell. Old age and pop and potential death is enough to take away your peace. A man of 83 years is telling you, do not ignore. Take it full time. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Anasrita Karba Palam Kadyam Karma Karotiyaha Sasanyasi Cha Yogi Cha Niragnihi Nacha Akriyaha So, before entering into the actual exercise of meditation, he is trying to tell us that we have to make the preparations proper. Once you are in sleep, there are no difference, rich man, poor man, saint, sinner. But you can't sleep if the Bed is not made proper. If you have not protected yourself from mosquitoes and insects, if you don't have enough ventilation, air, so preparations are necessary. In this state of meditation, once you reach that higher state, you become oblivious to the external world. 
but to reach there you have to make preparations so you cannot ignore them that process of preparation is through karma yoga right so you can't ignore that so since that is part of this jnana marga and in that you were taught in the karma yoga how to renounce your attachment to results sense of agency etc that has the spirit of sanyasa in that that has the spirit of sanyasa in that so you can't ignore that and a person who renounces externally has not integrated the mind intellect through karma yoga also cannot do meditation therefore since they are part and parcel of the path anga angi you have to take them with the same importance anashritah karma phalam karyam karma karoti ha sa sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnihi na cha atriya ha anashritah not depending upon karma phalam the results of action karyam that action which should be done this action should be done now what results will come is in god's hand i, I should not worry about that this action should be done karyam do it karma karoti yah sa sanyasi because he has no dependency on results he has renounced them he is sanyasi and because he is focusing to the self he is using this karma also to integrate the mind and intellect he is a yogi not because one doesn't become a sanyasi by leaving home at home the five fires have to be maintained at home so that's called agni so grahastha main emphasis is in agni sanyasa main emphasis on leaving actions but the spirit behind them is leaving the ego without taking care of the leaving the ego i am the doer enjoyer without freeing yourself from dependence on the results you cannot become a sanyasi nor a yogi once you take care of this renunciation of attachment to the results and doership and enjoyership you have a sanyasi too so they are not totally two different things why is telling kri arjuna wanted to run away so krishna says you can't run away to meditate without doing your actions in the spirit of dedication renouncing your attachment to results merely running away is not sanyasa running away from the responsibilities of the home from maintaining the five fires is not sanyasa right nor leaving the actions that has to be done if a responsibility that's not sanyasa leaving the home leaving the actions is not sanyasa anashritah karma phalam karyam karma karoti ah sa sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnihi na cha akriya both in spirit of the same yoga karma yoga has the spirit of sanyasa sanyasa has in it the power to integrate both are not totally independent yam sanyasa miti prahu yogam tam vidhi pandava na nahya sankalpa sanya nahya sanyasta sankalpa yogi bhavati kachana 
Why? He says, a yogi, a karma yogi, without renouncing his brooding, his imagining, his desires, he can never become a karma yogi. If you have a karma yogi, you have to renounce your attachment to results, sense of agency, etc., desires. That is called sankalpa, sarva sankalpa sanyasi. If you do not renounce with the sarva sankalpas, you cannot become a yogi. Therefore, yoga has sannyasa in it. And this sannyasa brings yoga. Yam sannyasa miti prahu. Yogam tam vidhi pandava nakya sannyasta sankalpaha yogi bhavati kaschana. What the wise people say to be yoga is also renunciation. And why? Because without renouncing thoughts, desires, you cannot become a yogi. Now he gives guidelines up to what stage you should follow karma yoga. Then when do you become fit for meditation, contemplation? Aruruksho mune yogam karma karana muchyate yoga rudasya tasseva shemakkarana muchyate aruruksho mune yogam karma karana muchyate Till you become a master of your mind, you have to do karma yoga. After you have mastered the mind, you become fit for meditation. Arurukchoho munehi. Arurukchoho wanting to climb. The example taken is from the horse. When you want to ride the horse, put one leg on the saddle and another leg you lift and put the other side. Then the horse comes under your control. Similarly, when you want to control the mind, let one part of your mind be tuned to God and the other part in work, that mind is controlled. That mind is controlled when you tune to God and do your works. That's called yoga. Or when you want to climb the horse, munehe yogam karma karana muchati. Karma becomes the means. Yoga rudasya, once you have you, you are settled on the horse, the mind, shamakarana muchati, contemplation, peace. Shama means peace, contemplation becomes the cause. That is, do karma yoga till the mind is fit enough for contemplation. Once the mind becomes fit enough for contemplation, focus on contemplation. All right? And how do you know? When I have mastered my mind, how do you know? Yada hinendriya teshu na karmaswana shajjate sarva sankalpa sanyasi yoga rudasta dhuchyate. Whenever mind does not run after sense objects and sense experiences, it is not attached to actions or the results of actions. Once you have renounced all your association with thoughts of desire, sarva sankalpa sanyasi, yoga rudasta dochati, your mind has become a fit instrument, a mind under your control. You are riding over the mind. Once you have satisfied these conditions, that is, your mind doesn't run after sense objects, sense experiences, nor gets attached to actions and renounced all thoughts, desires. Then you have become a master of the mind. And now who should do it? 
Daivanugraham, you say, God should help me. God helps you if you withdraw from the outside world and go on invoking him. You have to do two things, withdraw and turn your attention to him, then he will help you. Without doing your part, he is helpless because you are not ready. So it is you that have to bring the mind under control. It is you that you have to turn your attention to God. Uddhare dhatmanat manam atna atmanam avasadayet atmai vahyatmano banduhu atmai varipur atmanaha. Your atma, your self, is your friend, is your enemy. Uddhare dhatmana atmanam. Therefore, you lift your ego by yourself. You lift your mind by yourself. And do not allow the mind to slip down, the ego to slip down. And such a man who has control, the Atman becomes friend. Once who allows to slip, that's his enemy. You are your friend, you are your enemy. Therefore, you should try to lift your mind by yourself. So here, what was suggested in the previous verse, in the next verse he says, who is a friend, who is an enemy? Banduhu atma atmanastasya one who has controlled the mind, to him he becomes a friend of himself because he will experience that ultimate goal. One who has brought the mind under his control. He is his friend. One who allows the mind to wander. One who has not controlled the self. He is his own enemy. He becomes instrument in destroying the peace that is in him. And therefore, one who has controlled the mind is his friend one who has not controlled the mind is his enemy. Jitat manah prashantasya aramatma samahitaha sito vishna sukadukkeshu tathamana pamana yoh jnana vijnana truptatma utastho vijitendriyaha yukta yuchyate yogi samalostas makanchanaha Jitatmanaha, one who has controlled the self, Prashantasya, therefore peaceful, Paramatma, that supreme self, Samahitaha, collected from dissipations, like Sita, Ushna, Sukha, Dukkeshu, pairs of opposites. Sita, cold, Ushna, heat, Sukha, Comfort, dukkha, pain, mana, honor, avamana, dishonor. These are the pairs of opposites that continuously rob our peace. And you tackle them through turning your attention away from them, focusing to the self, thus controlling the mind. When can you do that? Jnana Vijnana Truptatma. One who no more depend on the external world, he is happy by the knowledge and wisdom 
Kuta means anvil. On an anvil, pieces of iron are hit with hammer, broken, but nothing happens to the Kuta. On you, the Kuta, the anvil, different experiences come and hammer, but you do not move. So what are the different, said in the previous sloka, Sita, Ushna, Sukha, Dukkha, Mana, Avamana. These onslaughts cannot do anything to you. Why? Because you are established in the knowledge and wisdom. You are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the intellect, you are the self. Vijitendriyaha, one who has conquered the self, Yukta Yichuchade Yogi, that man, is said to be a successful meditator, a man who has integrated himself. Such a man, such a person who has achieved this mastery over the mind, harmonized the mind and intellect, thereafter he looks low star, cloud of earth, ashma, stone, Kanchana, gold, they are all same for him. Why suddenly he brings this? Unless you come to that state of losing value for anything external, starting from a cloud of earth to gold, you still are in the world of forms, names and forms. One cannot be dreaming and waking up at the same time. While you are dreaming, you cannot wake up. You cannot be in two dimensions at the same time. If you want to go where there are no forms, where there are no thoughts, you want to experience that self, you have to completely lose all value for external things. Let it be earth, let it be stone, let it be gold. You have no value for them. You don't depend on them. Right? Does it mean that he has gold, he will throw away? He may do that also because there are stories like Patanatharanda are doing, but that's not what is it. He knows gold, he knows this thing, he, knows. he has no value. But if he has gold, somebody is suffering, he may give them. Because sometimes what stone can do, gold cannot do. What earth can do, both cannot do. Everything has its own place. God has made them like that. He sees God in all. He doesn't have any extra value for anything. But in the Vavahara world, in the world of transactions, he know what to use, when, how to give them to others, make them secure. So therefore, he knows the relative value, but he himself has no value for them. And he sees the same God in all, because each has a definite purpose. Where you need earth, gold cannot help. Where you need a stone, gold cannot help. Everything has its own purpose. And therefore, he sees God in all. And the same idea is next taken to the living entities. Sukrun, mit, mit, sukrun Mitra, Ari, Udasina, Madhyasta, Dveshya, Bandhusu, Sadhusu, Apichapapeshu, Samabuddhihi, Vishishyate. He sees the same God in a friend. In a well-wisher. Sukrun Mitraha, in a friend, Udasinaha, who is indifferent, Ari, enemy, Sukrun Mitra, Ari, Mitra, Mitra, friend, Ari, enemy, Udasinaha, indifferent, Madhyastha, Madhyastha, People who do not take any side, neutral people. Dvesya, one who hates you. Bandushu, one who is a relative. 
Sadushu, the saints. Papeshu, sinners. Samabuddhihi, visishyate. And such a person who sees the same God in all, he accepts. I will... Uh, this is very important because you think it is impossible. You think you cannot see the saint and the sinner at the same level. Unless you do that, you cannot get freedom from mind. How do you do that? Both a saint and a sinner are seeking the same happiness. Happiness is God. Therefore, both are trying to reach God. Both are essentially God, trying to reach God. One takes the comfortable, smooth path. The other, not knowing the path, goes in a rugged way. In a rugged way. Their GPSs are different because their points of starting are different. Their points of starting are different. Therefore, their GPSs are different. Their tools are different. Their vehicles are different. But both of them are gods reaching gods. So how can you hate such a person? He is not blessed as the other person. He is in the higher class. This man is in the lower class. He is also going there. You should not hate such people. You should see them also as devotees of God because they are reaching there. And when does a man you call sinner because he hurts others? Why does he hurt others? Because he is not happy. Because there is a very prominent statement. No happy man ever hurts another man. He is not happy. He doesn't know how to get his happiness. Therefore, he is hurting. You should only have sympathy. You should only give him guidance. You should only help him. You cannot afford to hate him. You should see the same God in all. Mitra Ari, Udasena, people who do not try to help you, in, indifferent. Madhyasta, neutral position. Dvesya, people who hate you. They are hating because they see something wrong in you. It's their vasanas. And you also need them. Because with them also you should see God. So it's a laboratory. It's a workshop. God provided you. Dvesya, bandushu, relations. See the same God in all. Helping you differently through different ways and different appearances. Accept them all as God. Though sometimes in the transactional world, you have to protect your interest. Protect your interest, but do not hate anybody. Safeguard your interest. You don't have to be a fool. You don't have to be a fool. Safeguard your interest, but do not hate anybody. This is important if you have to keep the mind equanimous and without keeping the mind equanimous, you cannot reach that state because that state is equanimous. That state is equanimous. So this seeing God in all is the most important factor in meditation. The rest of the chapter we shall see next week and another week thereafter, right? Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Basishati Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Om Thank you all.